to International Press Agency Interviews. I'm Mo from Melbourne, here with Vincent from the Philippines and Tenzin from Tunisia. Hi. And today we'll be discussing the experience of how it is to be a nonviolent journalist. For this interview, we are so honored to be with the co-director of Presenza, a human movement activist, former director of the Middle East Treaty Organization, coordinating committee member of Abolition 2000, Global Network to Eliminate Nuclear Weapons, and also journalist himself, Tony Robinson. Hey, Tony, thanks so much for joining us. How are you? Hey, yeah, good. Thank you very much. Thanks for, thanks for inviting me for this interview. Oh, no worries. We're so thrilled to see you and for giving us this opportunity to, opportunity to talk nonviolent journalism. But before we get started, for those watching who might not know, could you please tell us what is nonviolent journalism? Okay, so, so nonviolent journalism is a style of journalism which Presenza International New, uh, Press Agency have been developing over the 14 or 15 years of, of our activity. We came into being in 2009 uh, with the aim of promoting an activity called the World March for Peace and Nonviolence. And that was an activity which over the course of three months from October to, uh, to, to January 2009-2010, um, traveled the world promoting uh, peace and nonviolence and calling for the end of uh, the elimination of nuclear weapons, the, uh, the peaceful resolution of conflicts, the withdrawal of, of occupying troops from different countries. And at the end of that whole process, after, after doing all of this work, promoting the march and all the activities and the endorsements of it, um, we decided that we would carry on our activities, um, but really trying to create a space in the media for stories which are connected to human rights, uh, peace, obviously, uh, and the fight against all forms of discrimination. So we we wanted to, to develop a style which is different to the mainstream media. We find in the mainstream media that typically violent cells. Yeah, they're very interested. The media is very interested in, in war and violence and conflict. We're interested in resolving war, resolving con conflict and creating a new, uh, a new society in which every human being has the possibility to live a dignified life. Our style of journalism, we hope, which is, which is built on, on the work done by others in the field. We're not the first people to talk about peace and nonviolence in journalism, but we built on, on the work done by others such as Johan Galtung, and we have uh, attempted to, to systematize the way that we do our journalism. Why is it we choose one topic over another? Why do we choose a certain language rather than a different kind of language? Why do we choose a particular set of stories rather than other stories. So all of this, over the years that we have developed, we've we've kind of we had an idea of of how we were different to other forms of journalism, and so we we decided to write a book about it. Here's our book, Nonviolent Journalism, and in there it kind of describes the principles. Uh, on which we base our journalism uh, and the tools that we use when we are writing. So that's a little bit where it's all come from. Great, thank you so much. But we want to know why you opted to work with nonviolent journalism. In other words, what's your personal reason for doing this kind of journalism? Okay, well, I think it should be clear to absolutely everybody on the planet that the way that we organize ourselves the way that the global system of global governance, the economic system, they're not they're not working, they're not sustainable, um, and they need changing. Now, if we were, you know, imagine we discover a, a new planet that we can inhabit, we go there, we all populate it, we come with a sheet of paper and say, how are we going to organize ourselves? Most likely, we would not agree to have a system in which, for instance, we had kings as the head of state. We would not have a system which allowed a very, very small number of people to accumulate enormous 
enormous fortunes, while the vast majority of the population live in abject poverty. We would have, we would agree that it's that we need to have a planet which will be able to sustain life, all forms of life, for hundreds of millions of years to come. And what we have at the moment, we don't have that on this planet. So my my conviction, my my inspiration um, was to try and make a contribution to help all of those activists who have identified that there's a problem, whether that's in the field of, of, of economic um, injustice, whether it's migration, whether it's the fight of women to get better access to, to their human rights, whether it's environmental protection, whatever it is, yeah, we wanted to create a space which would allow those um, those activists to find information which is useful for them and also to be able to, to publish the information about the events and the activities that they're doing. Because in reality, although we don't see it on the mainstream media, there are hundreds of thousands, if not millions of people all, all around the world who aspire to live in a better world and they're working for it. But somehow we if we watch the mainstream media, we would think, well, there's very, very few people who actually care about these things. So we'll just continue with the status quo. So that our the journalism that we do, the nonviolent journalism and in Presenta, we try and give space to that so that people who want to know about the possibility of creating a better planet, they have a source of information, they have a place where they can come to and see information which is going to help them. Well, wow. <laughs> very ambitious and selfless work. Very noble. That's that's it from me. I'm going to hand you over to Vincent now. Thank you, Mo. Hi, everyone. I'm Vincent from the Philippines. Hi, Tony. I'm just curious, how long have you already been in this industry? And in that number of years, what is the hardest challenge you have ever faced as a nonviolent journalist? Ooh, that's an interesting question. So I first got involved in this journalism with the World March for Peace and Nonviolence in 2009. I had the opportunity to travel with the World March for 60 out of the 90 days that it took to go from New Zealand all the way around to Argentina. Um, and one of the roles that I had was kind of in the media uh, section in, in the team. Um, selecting photographs for a date for the daily news story writing about what was going on um but the hardest thing i think is actually breaking through into the public consciousness that peace and nonviolence are important that they're possible and that they're necessary because you know change is hard it's hard to change things there's a lot of resistance in the world and especially if we're talking about changing the economic system so that we no longer have billionaires well the problem is that the billionaires own everything they own the media they own all of the corporations they own um all the health you know, in some countries they own all the healthcare services yeah you know? so so the billionaires the elites who enjoy very much the world that they live in they have got a lot of resistance to any kind of change. Now, the thing is that the people who want that change are in their billions. So it should be a no brainer. It should be really easy to see that, okay, well, look, we're, we're more than them. All we have to do is get together, organize ourselves and, um, and do what needs to be done. However, because because society is under the control of the, the billionaires, the oligarchs, the elite, if you like, um, it's been incredibly difficult for, for us and for me to try and get that message outside of the echo box of, of those people who are already activists. So that is, it, it's really, you know, it's, it, it can be quite, um, quite disheartening sometimes to be in this field because 
it's so plain the need for change and it's so difficult to actually achieve it but you know these days i i i i target the work that i do to to try and promote a new kind of society by training people like yourselves on the tools of nonviolent journalism so that hopefully you guys will become inspired by what you've been uh, um, you've experienced with with this and will actually take forward what you've learned into whatever field it is whether you decide to be an activist in a different field or if you want to be a journalist whatever but just just realize that the world doesn't have to be like this, that it is possible to make a change, but we just need to be much better coordinated and with much better information than what the people who control the system currently have. All right. So in the midst of that challenging moment for you, Tony, that you have mentioned, what made you pursue or what kept you motivated to continue nonviolent journalism? Um, there are two things that you can do in face of a, in the face of a, a problem that's, that you're faced with, you can try and do something about it or you do nothing. Yeah. Doing nothing will mean that you can continue in the same way. And we can see the tendencies in the world today are going in a very bad direction. Yeah. Um, climate change for one, poverty for another, um, pandemics you know, is, a, is a, new, a new topic that we've been exposed to recently. Yeah, so we need better coordination. We need to change things in order to prepare ourselves in order to make the, the, the planet habitable for, for, for another few million years. Yeah, so, um, so doing that and training new people on these topics is something which actually is a choice, a personal choice that I have made, because you can either fall asleep and, and die, or you can actually stand up and say, right, we've got to do something about this. And even though doing something about it is the harder path, it is the only one that makes any sense. Does that answer your question? All right. Absolutely. Absolutely, Tony. Thank you for those insightful ideas, personally, those uh, motivation that you have. Let me now pass the virtual floor to Tasneem. Tasneem, you may now have the floor. Thank you, Vixen. So, Tony, we, we talked about, or you mentioned the things that kept you motivated and kept you going. So now, what can you say to individuals to encourage them and motivate them and inspire them to become nonviolent journalists? Um, I think... Yeah, it's 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 a difficult question. Um, you know, I don't want to tell anyone what they have to do. I don't want to force anyone to do anything that they don't want to do. But I hope that through exposure to nonviolent journalism, I hope that we can create an awakening in people um, of uh, a different kind of world, a different kind of society in which everyone has the possibility to have a dignified life with access to good quality health care and education. So, so this, I think, is important and I think everyone should know about it. But, but I don't want to force anyone to do it. I want people to have information which will allow them to have an awakening because everyone everyone is really asleep at the moment in our society we're all kind of daydreaming through the society and the reason why we're in that kind of society is because those elites those oligarchs those billionaires make it very very difficult for us because they put everyone as soon as possible into very very complicated situations where it's difficult for them to survive so you know, debt is you know, people are you know overwhelmed with with debt, which means that they feel obliged to go to work to earn money in order to pay the to pay the debt. But this is how the system works. It it puts everyone in debt and then makes them so tired 
through the work that they have to do. There's a constant battle to survive every day. And, and I want people to, to kind of have one day a realization that the world that we see in front of us is not the world that we have to accept. And we know very, very clearly from the experience of, for instance, when, when the Soviet Union and the, empire, the Soviet Empire um, disappeared and there was the end of the Berlin Wall, um, there was a very, very peaceful and very, very nonviolent transition to a new system. Now, that new system for those people in that part of the world was a disaster. It's the one that we've got now. But it could have been different. It could have been that all of those people who suddenly realized, hey, this system that we live in is a complete failure. It doesn't work. We need a new system. You know, if we can cre help create an awakening in people that there can be a new world, and, and if they come to present them and they can see, oh, well, look at these social experiments happening in Peru, in Guatemala, in Indonesia, in, in Zambia, wherever it may be, I can do that in my place. And they start organizing themselves and they start to see for themselves that change is possible. That change has a very great feedback loop because the more that I see a positive change, the more faith that I have in myself that change is possible and the more strength in my convictions that it's something that has to be done. So, so that's kind of where I'm kind of hoping that, that we can go with this, that by, by providing the information, by inspiring the people, by seeing, look, the path that we are going down as humanity is this one. And this one is leading to the end of human civilization. I mean, let's be clear, that's where we're going. Yeah, human civilization probably has 10, 20 years before we've heated the planet so much that it's, it's unsustainable apart from in a very few pl uh, places or you know, the alternative to an apocalypse by by um, climate change is the apocalypse of a nuclear war. Well, you know, we have 14,000 nuclear weapons on this planet at the moment. If And there's evidence to suggest and reports to suggest that only 100 of those would being used on big cities would be enough to lead 2 billion human beings to to starvation. That is the end of civilization as we know it. We would never recover from such a huge um, death toll. <laughs> it would be it would be a real shame. So I think that that the work that we're doing is hopefully enabling people to to wake up to say, okay, we need to do something. We need to do something now. We are more than they are. We can do it. Let's get together. Let's cooperate. And I'm, one of the things I hope that comes out of nonviolent journalism and the work that we're doing in Presenza is to show people who are activists in women's rights, in climate change, in poverty, in migration, in you know, LGBT rights, whatever field of activism it is, we can help them see that actually we are all suffering from the same problem. And the problem is that we've created this tool called money, which we are then allowing a few people to accumulate and with that, through that accumulation, they are able to dominate everything and, and kill the planet. So that's kind of what I'm hoping that will come out of my participation in, in nonviolent journalism. And, and I hope that it can inspire others to, to get into it as well. Thank you, Tony. That's honestly so powerful. I mean, changing the status quo is, it seems so hard, but unfortunately you cannot change those who don't want to be changed, change has to be from within. Yeah. So um, before we end our interview, I just want to give you the space to say anything, maybe to answer a question you, you, you wanted us to ask, but we yeah. haven't. So it's a free space for you to say anything you want. Thank you. I think for me, one of the key things about nonviolent journalism is that it is, it's a two-part process. There's a process here of what we hope is going to be social change, but there's also here a process of, of personal change. Now we live in a world which is very violent. That violence has many, many different forms, the economic violence, psychological violence, uh, and so on, and the physical violence, which is obviously 
what happens at the end of all of these other different forms of violence. Yeah? We live in a world in which we have been educated to be violent, that to be educated to accept violence from a very young age. We have learned to treat people in ways that we would not like to be treated ourselves. And I think what is unique about our style of journalism is that by, by the experience of nonviolent journalism, one actually starts to change internally ourselves. And this process is kind of symbiotic, you know, the personal change, social change, all happening at the same time. So why? Because then through the personal change, I also suffer less in my own life. And I, I am able to do more of the things that are important for me and that can be helpful for other people. That has an effect on society. That effect on society also helps them to treat other people the way that they would like to be treated. And that effect and that has an effect on me. And so I, I, I would like people, after the exposure to nonviolent journalism, to realize that it's more than just, um, it's just more than just writing words in, in documents and publishing them. It's actually has, has an Im Im impact on myself and, and on the people who surround me and the change around me also has a positive influence on myself. So that's what I would say to, to finish off your question. Thank you, Teston. Thank you so much, Tony. And with that, we have reached the end of our interview. Thank you so much, everyone. I mean, Mo, Vixen, and, and David in the background, thank you so much. Mm -hmm. We are from different continents, and the time difference is so drastic, but we fortunately managed to make this interview so successful. So thank you so much, everyone. And Tony, it's always a pleasure having you with us. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you for proposing the interview. And I think it was, it's been a very nice, very nice exercise for us to do.